Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is Dr. Pay Part 2 Work RVUs. So, my previous week's video about physician payment was so popular that I'm going to continue to cover Dr. Pay because it is so important to how healthcare operates that it's probably worthy of more than one video. And so now we're going to talk about RVUs. Now, RVU stands for Relative Value Units. Now, I will leave a link in the show notes to a previous video that I have made about RVUs that explain it in more detail, but I'm going to assume you kind of know what an RVU is now. And I'm also going to leave a link in the show notes for my prior video on how doctors are paid as well. So watch that one too. Now, work RVUs, like I said, are Relative Value Units, and they are tied to specific CPT codes. So when a doctor bills for their services, all those bills have codes on them for um, essentially what are called either evaluation and management, which are office visit codes, or for doing a particular procedure like a colonoscopy or a surgery. And so the relative value units, which are determined by RUC, which is the previous video that I made, um, is tied to the CPT codes. Okay, so let me give you some examples. So an E&M, an Evaluation and Management CPT code for an office visit, an example might be 99202, which is a new patient visit of kind of medium to lower complexity. Um, it's expected that the doctor is going to spend about 20 minutes of face-to-face -face time with the patient for that, and that is an RVU of 0 0.93. So 0 0.93 RVUs for that 99202 CPT code. So they build that uh, let's say they see five patients with that, so you would do five times the 0 0.93. That's how many RVUs they would build for those five patients. Now, let's go and use another example for an actual procedure. So 45380 is for a colonoscopy with biopsy, typically performed by a gastroenterologist. And that takes about 30 to 60 minutes to perform your typical uh, colonoscopy per the Mayo Clinic. I'll leave a link in the show notes to that. And that would give the RVUs for that one colonoscopy of 3.56. So it's about four times as many RVUs as the Evaluation and Management Code uh, 99202. Okay, now let's translate this into overall physician salary for a year. So let's say there's a gastroenterologist who bills 10,500 RVUs per year. Now, that would put them in the 75th percentile for gastroenterologists. In other words, they build more than the average gastroenterologist. That would, uh, they would end up making about $68 per RVU, which comes out to about $712,000. Now, the point of this video is not to say that $712,000 is or is not a justified salary for a gastroenterologist in the 75th percentile. I'm just saying that's how 10,500 RVUs then translates into the annual salary or into dollars, which is easier for us to understand. All right, now let's look at what the median RVUs are by specialty. So in this case, median meaning 50th percentile, so not 75th percentile. Okay, let's start at the top. The highest is cardiothoracic surgeons at 9,822 RVUs per year. Next is neurosurgeons with 9,333 RVUs per year. Next is radiologists with 8,862 RVUs per year. Next up is ophthalmologists at 8,438 RVUs per year. And next we have orthopedic surgeons at 8,009 RVUs per year. Now, obviously there's many other specialties. There's emergency medicine, there's uh, um, dermatology, there's ear, nose, and throat, etc. It goes on and on and on. Let's just look at primary care physicians, right? Because when we talk about value-based care and wanting to provide more preventive care and chronic disease care to keep people more healthy and from being sick, let's look at primary care physicians. So for internal medicine and for family practice, the primary care physicians that treat adults, they on average bill 4900 RVUs per year. 4,900 RVUs per year? Shoot, that's like half these other people up here. Well, obviously, primary care physicians are working half as much as all these specialists, right? No, of course not. I'm being sarcastic. So, if you look at the average number of hours worked per week, on average, a specialist works 52 hours a week, and a primary care physician works 51 hours a week. How can this be? 
How can specialists and primary care physicians work almost the same number of hours? Now, I'm sure every single physician watching this video is like, I work more than 52 hours a week. Look, everybody overestimates the number of hours a week that they work. I'm just saying, this is what the survey said. Now, how is it that they can work essentially the same amount of hours per week, but the RVUs can be so different? And it goes back to this point up here, which is the RVUs are only tied to CPT codes. So if primary care physicians do work that they can't bill on a CPT code, then it can't be captured in their RVUs. Does that exist? Well, I'm going to answer that video at the end of the question, so stick around. Now, what are the benefits and pitfalls? What are the pros and cons of work RVUs? Well, it, I'll leave a link in the show notes to a review that said that, look, work RVUs by and large, benefit the employer of the doctor, whether it be the hospital system or the private equity firm or the whatever, whoever owns the group practice, it benefits the employer of the physicians more so than the physicians themselves. Why is that? Because for the employer, the doctors compete for patients because they want to see as many patients as possible to bill as many RVUs as possible. And so it keeps the hospital busy. In the world of work RVUs, doctors are only paid by volume. They are not paid by quality. They are only paid by volume. They are not paid by quality. Not only that, many physician groups even pay their physicians a graduated RVU scale such that the dollars per RVU goes up the more RVUs they bill. So that just adds kerosene to the fire to bill more RVUs. Now, what are the cons for the doctor for the RVU system? Is you will not be paid for all the work that you do. And that holds true for primary care physicians and for specialists. I'm not saying specialists are able to bill for everything they do. No, of course not. They do work as well that they can't bill for. However, all of the care coordination that primary care physicians do takes a ton of time in regard to phone calls and emails and uh, collecting and communicating medical records and having family conversations and doing refills. In fact, there is so much care coordination by primary care physicians that Medicare actually added a CPT code for care coordination that starting in 2015, primary care docs could actually bill for. It's 99490. They can bill it once a month for 20 minutes of care coordination activity over the course of that month. Now, so that's fine. Here's the problem. Commercial insurance companies, by and large, do not reimburse 99490. That's right, if you're in an employer-sponsored plan, your health insurance carrier more than likely does not pay the primary care physicians that see your employees and their family members to coordinate their care. And so what happens? Yes, there are absolutely primary care physicians that go way out of their way to do a ton of care coordination. They're not getting paid for it. And at the end of the day, oftentimes what you pay for gets done. And so oftentimes the degree of care coordination that your employees and their family members actually need is not getting, it's not getting reimbursed for. And that is one of the root causes for why primary care physicians only have 4,900 RVUs per year as opposed to 9,822 RVUs per year because they're doing all this work, right? 51 hours of work versus 52 hours of work. They're doing the same number of hours, but they can't translate those hours into CPT codes and they can't uh, translate those CPT codes into RVUs and they can't translate those RVUs then into their income. So this is a detailed explanation as to why the current RVU-based fee-for-service for, fee for system, by definition, will hamper adequate and effective primary care. And one would argue that until this system is changed, we will never have adequate primary care because of the way it's paid for. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching.